will stay relaxed. Hello, everybody. We have our last presentation of the day. I will have the beginner's guide to the teensy rom. I am not an expert on the teensy rom. Our expert is over there. But so if he if I get something wrong, he'll shout from the wings and say, "Robert, you got that all wrong." I'll go, "Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry." <laughs> but I'll give you a brief look at what's happening here on the teensy rom. And of course, if you have questions about MIDI or any of those other subjects I don't know about, ask him over there, Travis. Okay, here we go. So uh, up over here, we have the Tizi Rom. The Tizi Rom works well with the Ultimate 64. Uh, all you have to do is like, uh, when you, you power up the system, it comes up with this menu right here. We have games, multimedia, pictures, seat cover tunes, test diagnostics, utilities, CCGMS terminal program, so you can get online with your uh, uh, Commodore 64. Synth cart, good old synth cart. Uh, Station 64, which I've looked up that program. It, there's a lot of pages to its manual online. So it's a very complicated program, uh, according to me. <laughs> it would take lots of study, since I'm not a musician. We have MIDI to SID, which is new for me, and also the Teensy Rom ACID player, which is new since its last version. We're going to look at see and see what's on the Teensy Rom in its memory right now, in its flash memory. So let's take a look at games. We click return. And we have here a few games listed here like Beachhead, Dig Dog, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong, Gorf, Joust, Mario Bro Jupiter Lander, Mario Brothers, Minesweeper, Miss Pac-Man, Robocop 2, Super Mario Brothers, Terminator 2, and Tetris. Notice that most of these are CRTs and a few PRGs. I'm not sure what a high 8 is. Or, yeah, uh, as well. Oh, they are? Yeah. <laughs> because ordinarily, the Team Serum only understands CRTs, PRGs, P00s, and, and, and some other files that I'm not quite sure about, like Koala files and Doodle files. So, zip files. Oh, SID files. Okay, SID files. There you go. So let's let's boot up a game here, and you can see how fast it is. Look, here's Peach Hat Two. Hit it, and it thinks it's a cartridge. There we go. The game is beginning. Let me turn up the volume on this thing if I can. And I should have turned up the volume before I started this presentation. <laughs> what do I do with this thing here? Ah, I did it wrong. And I did it wrong. Okay, well, I can't get the volume going on this monitor because it's relatively new to me. And Beach 2 is not responding to my joysticks. Do something. <laughs> uh oh. What is going on here? I can't get Beach 2 to. To respond, I don't know why. You can work. Yes. Uh oh, oh, maybe I just had to wait for it. Okay, here it. F one, one player. Okay. F one. F one, attack. There it is. And I dropped my parachuter, uh, my paratroops down, and whoop. I dropped him onto the ground way too fast. Sorry, I killed a soldier. <laughs> uh, maybe I have to fly higher. There we are. <laughs> I can't be too low. <laughs> he, he doesn't have enough time to open up his parachute. My helicopter is too low. There goes another para paratrooper. Good enough. Okay. Very good. It's beachhead. Okay. So to get out of it, all we do is press the reset button on the Teensy ROM, and it'll get us back to the menu. Yay, we're back to the menu. Uh, when I was first using the Teensy ROM on a different Ultimate 64, I had trouble getting back into the, the main menu here. And what I had to do with the, uh, the other Ultimate 64 was power it down completely, and then power it back up, and then I get back to the menu. But it seems that this ultimate is okay with its cartridge port. It understands what to do. 
So let's get out of this game menu. The Ultimate actually has some settings that are have to be set up right for depending on the cartridge you're using. So uh -huh. I've seen a couple that weren't set up right, and so we had to go. I did not know there were cartridge settings in the Ultimate 64. <laughs> It's got so many capabilities that, yes, it does. <laughs> it has a lot of capabilities. So we go to multimedia. Here we are. Ooh, Swint plus Light Fantastic. Well, I know Swint. I'm not sure about Light Fantastic. And there's Draw, which is an easy drawing program. Let's look at Swint. Good old Swint. And press space. Oh, look at that. It's drawing. And it's playing music. If only I could figure out how to bring the volume up. <laughs> okay, maybe if I go down, yep. down. There you go. Oh, there it is. Okay, bring up the volume. Ah, there it is. Ah, yes. The hypnotic tunes of swing. <sighs> You're supposed to dream and sleep to the music and look at the psychedelic patterns and space out. <laughs> and this program was made in the 1980s. So there you go. For those hippies out there who need something to space out on. Okay, let's get out of it. And draw is just a very simple program. Oh, you wrote that? I, I didn't know where it came from. So yeah. I said, I've never seen this. It do like, much it's like this. it's like etch, etch a sketch. I go, mean, oh, it's, a, it's an etch a sketch yeah. program. <laughs> okay. If you're good on etch a sketch, in fact, <laughs> didn't they make an etch a sketch program for the C64? Maybe okay. they did. <laughs> I'll have to compare it. Let's get out of it again. And going back up to the menu up here. Sid Cover Tooth. Now, this is relatively new to me. Uh, if it w was in the last version that I had, I don't remember it being there. But look, we have all these songs now. Ooh, the Beatles. You mean it has <laughs> a voice sample? I don't think so. Let's try the Beatles. Instrumental, <laughs> Instrumental version only. No voice samples. Maybe you would get in trouble with <laughs> copyright if you had voice samples. <laughs> so you gotta get the joke on that. When I'm 64 is the joke? Okay. <laughs> well, when I'm ultimate 64. They never wrote uh, when I'm 128. <laughs> when I'm mega 65. When I'm mega 65. There you go. When I'm mega 65. Okay. Space, back to the main menu. Try a different one here. Pig Floyd, yes, Pig Floyd. Popcorn, uh, popcorn. Wait a minute, which version of popcorn is it? Because oh, this is a different version of popcorn. I use a different one for the Commodore LA Super Show commercials. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. And I did get, you know, a warning from <laughs> YouTube saying. You're using copyrighted music, but I didn't get penalized for it. So I said, oh, okay. Even though it was a Sid version of Popcorn, they, they immediately flagged it and said, this is copyrighted, but no, no, they didn't say take it out or delete it. <laughs> okay, let's get back out of it. We're, we're just going to go straight to back to the menu. Okay, oh, go back up. Okay, we're going to go to test and diagnostics. Now, notice that there is a C128 diagnostics cartridge here. I have never tested the TC ROM on the C128. So I know it works in C64 mode. I've never tried it in C128 mode. Does it work in C128 40 column mode? Yeah, it is uh, 40 column mode. It's, that's the only Yeah, I'm trying to think of other C128 cartridges. Wait, Warp Speed? <laughs> Mach 128? Those are utility cartridges. I can't think of any other C128 CRTs that are out there. Yeah, that's huh. the only one I know of. Okay. And we have some other testers here. 
But of course, for some of the testers, you also need the accompanying um, add-ons, you know, to do test your joystick ports correctly, you use it for loopbacks, that's it, thank you very much. I need loopbacks to correctly test. Let's go back out of it. Utilities, 80 columns, that's a new one on me. Does it really give 80 columns on the C64? Let's see. Not very pretty, but... Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah there it is. Hey, actually, that's fairly clear, really. I've seen some other software versions of 80 columns that they're, look, they're kind of fuzzy. This one's fairly sharp. Wow, pretty good. Oh no, let's get back out of it. Reset. Dual cut. Whoa, whoa, something happened. <laughs> uh oh, something happened. I do not know. Let's try again. Uh oh, I'm not getting back to the menu. Maybe I'll power down the ultimate and power back up. Oh, there it is. Oh, I did a reset. Okay. Oh, no. There we are. Okay. The ultimate, the, this uh, push button switch on the side of the ultimate <laughs> sometimes interferes. They are they are redoing the, the switch on the new version of the ultimate 64 coming out in a few months. They're redoing it more for a toggle switch instead of a momentary switch because people kept getting confused on the momentary switch. They would get confused going, wait, wait one second to reset, two seconds to <laughs> do a different reset, four seconds to shut off. So yeah, the people are getting confused. Uh, let's go to another part here. Uh, we go to the terminal program. And unfortunately, I am not uh, hooked in. Here's our terminal program. Hi. Unfortunately, yes, I have no Wi-Fi connection here or Ethernet connection here, so we cannot use our terminal program. We have a member of our group who does understand Wi-Fi terminal programs like this, so uh, our, in our Fresno group, but he would be the expert, not me, because back in the day, I didn't use BBSs. I was a, a Genie and a Delphi subscriber, one of those online services. Okay, we pop out of it again. Good old synth card. Here it is. So we have our, our musical keyboard here. <laughs> and of course, this is really useful if you had one of those incredible musical keyboards for the C64, which gives you a kind of piano over keyboard overlay over your. Uh, keys here, so you don't have to push QWERTY keys over here. And it seems the synth card is running slightly fast because I have the Ultimate 64 running at 48 megahertz instead of the normal 1 megahertz of a Commodore 64. Okay, Station 64, oh, this program, oh, okay. <laughs> if anyone can tell me how to use Station 64 more easily, <laughs> please tell me. Because I tried this at user group meetings, my members have tried this at user group meetings. We're going, what? <laughs> We're getting all kinds of strange sounds out of it. We're going, what? But how do we control it? Where it it has numbers, it has dial, it has things. <laughs> it does sound effects. We're going, yeah. If we push the F keys, we oh, listen to that long sustained effect. Still going. <laughs> Will it reach the end? <laughs> Several months ago, I found out about a sound. I forget the name of the sound. I've written it down. But it keeps multiplying, but it never reaches the end. <laughs> it just keeps multiplying upon itself. And I forget what that name of the sound is called. Okay, okay. No, stop that sound. Okay, I stopped it. Uh oh. Yeah, I was able to get to other menus on space on station 64. Obviously, I'm not getting to other menus right now. Uh-oh. Maybe I'll get out of it. And one of these days I'll read the multi-page <laughs> booklet for station 64 that you can download online. Here's MIDI to sit. It looks very simple, really. Um, have you used this with the uh, MIDI players and it works well? 
Oh, that's another written version. Wow. Do you have copyright on it? <laughs> oh, there you go. Open source. Exit. Oh. They need a MIDI keyboard or something. Right. Or a MIDI sax saxophone yeah, or MIDI, sax. MIDI guitar. guitar. There you go. And we have the Teensy Rum ACID player, which uh, I'm not sure what it does. <laughs> what does it do, Travis? So, sorry, I'm trying to do um, ACID is a protocol over MIDI that encodes SID information within it. So there's a c couple websites out there like DeepSID that will uh, stream SID data over MIDI into it, and that will interpret that back into the SID data and play it on your SID. So you can do like you can basically use your 64 as a synthesizer. So musicians actually do that. They've got their big keyboards and whatnot, and uh, and run through different software to basically rack mount their their C64 to be just a synthesizer module. Huh. And uh, through ACID, you can. You get a lot lower level control of uh, the actual SID registers. You can do a lot more effects than just regular MIDI will do. Because regular MIDI doesn't understand anything about the SID. It's just telling you a note, turn this note on, turn this note off. But ACID actually encodes SID specific information within that stream. Interesting. Is so like wow. MIDI control codes or something? Could I like program a, a MIDI controller of some kind to send control codes? Yeah, um, it, it encodes it in the SysX, if you're familiar with the MIDI uh, uh, system exclusive uh, packet. So there's just a specific format within that SysX packet to uh, be able to decode it on the other end into SID registers. Uh, I'm not sure I, 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 we looked at enough pictures through here, or did we go through pictures? Well, we're going through pictures right now. So let's take a look at some pictures that we have here in the, the TC ROM memory. Black hole. Oh, look, black hole. And then if we use the cursor. Plus and minus, actually. The plus and minus, not the cursor left or right. It's plus and minus. OK, here we go. Had to make it as confusing as possible. <laughs> so we, if we use plus or minus, we'll scroll through the pictures that are in the TC ROM flash. Oh, look at that. TC ROM. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old tiger. Good old koala picture. Uh, relatively That's new picture I've never seen before. <laughs> Hamburger. Per. A high res picture. Now this is a uh, a T a TR file. Did you call it or um, dot ART? Yeah. Dot, dot ART, which I'm still not sure what a dot ART is. It looks like some kind of high res file. Oh, Frank. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Frank again. What, I'm Frank's obviously up? a big Zappa fan. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. So wait, you, you got these pictures from the net, or did you digitize them yourself? Yeah, I digitized them. So there's a, oh. a great website that I can't remember the name of that you can take any picture and it'll output a qual file. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah? You'll have to find that website and tell me about it so I could uh, convert pictures. I, I, I like to <laughs> convert pictures to koala or doodle pictures. Okay, well those are some of the pictures there. Of course down here at the bottom we have other things like F3, the SD card, if you have an SD card full of files. You have F5, the USB drive, and I have a USB drive stuck in here right now. So let's push F5 and look, it's counting 2100 files <laughs> from, the, uh, the, from the online one one load C64 collection, which has 2,100 files. There it is. Whoa, it came up pretty fast on the Ultimate 64. 114 pages. <laughs> 114 pages. We're on page one of 114. Whoa, look at that. And, oh, and we have other folders here. Now, on the, if, if we had a USB stick and we created our own folders on the USB stick, and we put in our own programs in various folders. Would the TC ROM understand all those folders that have been created on PC? Oh yeah. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. So it's also for navigation when you're in a big folder like that, you can hit any letter and it'll go to the first file starting with that letter. So Interesting. So it'll yeah. So it'll, you can do it through alphabetically. Right. 
like that. Oh, very good. So if we go into this folder here, alternative formats, we see, look, beans, easy flash, PRG, tape cart, ooh, controlled by joystick also. We can do that like that. Let's look and see what, what are in the bins. Hucky, magic desk. <laughs> magic desk. Well, uh, kind of kind of clunky. <laughs> well, most well, of the one card, the one little collection is in the magic desk CRT format. Oh, okay. Do you have here, like, uh, I was thinking, I know that uh, Geos has a CRT out there. Did you put Geos here? Uh, I'm sorry. Is, I'm sorry. I don't know if Geos is here in the one low collection. But if it isn't, I will put it in there because there is a Geos version that is CRT. Okay, we're going up a directory. And it's thinking again as it's hopefully not counting all 2100. Enter that directory. Reload it. <laughs> there are. Uh, pro tip for you, SD is a little bit faster, so it'll load that directory a little faster if you're on an SD card. I did not know that. Mic the micro SD is a little bit faster. So let's go to A. A. Oh, all the A's start there. B. All the B's start there. C. All the C's. So 2100 games or CRTs. This would keep. Each one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would take hours. I'd run out of time. People would get bored. So let's get, let's take a look at Cybotron CRT. Going up to it. Return. Oh, any rock? Oh, oh, it's going way fast because <laughs> because I have the Ultimate 64 going at 48 megahertz. Cybertron, wave one. Press F1. Ooh, one joystick, yes. No, nope, one joystick. Oh no, it's not controlling. Oh. <laughs> oh no, this this converted Sega joy uh, controller is not good enough. Or at least I'm having a delay here. Maybe I should, should switch it back down to the ultimate one megahertz. Okay. Cybertron. Enough of that. Reset. Plenty of games on the one load collection. And the one co load collection is updated, I believe, once a year at, at minimum. So, oh, the, it's New Year's Day? This is when he does it? Yep. Okay, very good. So, uh, if you wait until next year, you could get even more games because he keeps just adding. So instead of 2100, by next year you'll even have more to put onto a micro SD card or a USB stick. And let's see. Let me see if I can get into. Where am I good? F7 is your help. And of course, if you want to go just back to basic, you push F2. F2. And there we are. We are dropped into base. So that is my quick overview of the King C ROM. Any other questions or any other specifics? Like I still have questions about it. Uh, ask Travis. Get Travis on Facebook or <laughs> get Travis on email, and he'll tell you all about it. Thanks, everybody. And I was looking at the camera too much instead of looking at all you guys. Sorry. <laughs>